beginning of this project actually started in Egypt. Here we have a cemetery with hundreds of thousands of burials, not a single name associated with any individual. Who were these people? How are they connected to each other? We, we don't know, but genetics will allow us to do that. How are they connected to other ancient people? How are they connected to people living today? How are they connected within families inside the cemetery? Those are all questions that can be answered using genetics, and that's what got us started. Got started reconstructing those genealogies in ancient individuals and mummies in Egypt. We realized that in order to do that efficiently, we had to build some sort of template that we can lay this information on top of. And so we went back to Egypt and collected DNA samples from living people and built large maps and connections between those individuals. And then we realized, you know, we can do this not just in ancient Egypt, but we can do it throughout the world. That was the beginning of the technology of bringing this all together and reconstructing genealogies based on DNA. When we know something about how we're connected, that we share a biological relationship, we treat each other differently. The Sorensen Molecular Genealogy Foundation is to help people know people, not only know themselves, but know how we're all brothers and sisters. Often we found that when someone tries to trace their genealogy, they find blocks. Uh, they've lost written documentation, or, or perhaps the written documentation didn't exist at all. And when you get to that point, where do you go? What do you do? We know who our parents are, who our grandparents are, who our great-grandparents are, because their information is contained inside of ourselves. If we can unlock that information using the molecular techniques that we have, we've been able to bring together over the last dozen years, we can then reconstruct those genealogies based on the genetic information in addition to the written documentary evidence. This is accurate. We know how inaccurate the written information is on genealogy. This makes it accurate. Not only makes it accurate, but it takes us to a whole new level. We can go back thousands of years. Even though all of that molecular information is locked up and we carry it around with us wherever we go, it's difficult to get it out. So what we have to first do is, a, is obtain a, a sample of that DNA. We are inventing a new system of getting your DNA where we don't have to use blood. It's very, very exciting. One of the methods that we're using is a cheek swab where we take a small little swab and just swab the inside of your cheek, take the cells from that to extract the DNA. It shortens the sequencing process. Our new inventive process is going on right now, how we do DNA. We have three billion bits of information, of genetic information in each one of our cells. We're not looking at all of that in order to reconstruct these genealogies, but we're only looking at about 250 different parts of that three billion bit message of, of DNA. We compile all of those bits of information together in a large computer program that allows us to correlate all of the genetic signals that we get from an individual with their genealogical histories. The purpose of this research is to compile a database that will be accessible to all of the people of the world, to be able to, to search that database to find their genes, to find their gene pools, to find their ancestors. That is the purpose of this, of this project, is to produce that database that, that will be accessible to the general public, to be able to answer those questions that they have concerning their genealogies. For all the years that I've been associated with this project in molecular genealogy, I haven't found a single individual that's not interested in who he is. Where did he come from? How is he connected to other people? Are we Welsh? Are we Danish? Are we Norwegian? Are we English? Are we German? Are we African? Are we Asian? Where are my roots? Where did I come from? Those are things that we're going to be able to answer for people. Those are the things that we're answering right now for people. There's an interesting little exercise that you can do when you ask the question, how closely are we related to each other? See, you have two parents, and you have four grandparents, and you have eight great-grandparents, and if you go back just 30 generations, there is a potential for one billion ancestors. But if you go back 30 generations, you're back, say, 750 years. There's a problem here in that there were not a billion people on the earth 750 years ago. So what does that mean? That means 
uh, we all married our cousins, I guess. Uh, it means we're all related, that we coalesce, that our, that our genealogies collapse down on top of each other. And so we share common ancestors. Doesn't matter, you can take any two people in the world and someplace back there, they're gonna find genes that they share. Some of our strongest emotions are played out between our relatives, between members of our own family. And that can be for good, can be for bad. I know some fights that I've had with my brothers that I don't know that I'd have with anybody else, but also the love that I have for my brothers is different than anybody, uh, the love that I'd have for anybody else. Likewise, if we can show how closely we are related to each other, it's gonna change the way they feel about each other. In addition to being able to help families, it's amazing to see what it does to an individual. When an individual comes to us not knowing who he is, perhaps he's been adopted, doesn't know who his parents are or his grandparents are, he, he's floating, he's wondering, where do I fit in? How do I fit in and be able to answer that question for them? Tell them that this is where you came from. This is your population. This is how you fit in to the rest of the human family. That's, it's amazing how that changes a person's life.